Hey guys, my name is Mary Davies and I'm a nursing student here in Southern Utah and I am halfway through my program and sharing some tips with you so that you can get into your programs just like I did. If you've watched my other videos, you have registered for your prerequisites, gotten great grades from my study tips, and now you're ready to apply. That can be a pretty daunting process and so today's video, I'm just showing you exactly what my nursing application looked like. Today's video is mostly going to be a screen recording, but I'll try and put my face in the corner of the video so it's not too boring. And I also want to give a disclaimer that this is just my university's application and it will vary depending on your school. I'm assuming they're pretty similar, but if they aren't, I apologize. So hit that like button, I'll grab my computer and we can get started. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do is go to your university's homepage. So I have mine bookmarked already, and you'll just want to find their nursing page. So I just go to a list of the departments and find the nursing department, and they should have their own page. And then you're looking for something that says pre-licensure application. This one is the one for spring 2021, so they'll apply before September and then they'll start in January and then there's the application. The application document that they give you is about 11 pages but by the time you're done filling it out it'll be 20 to 25 pages depending on how many transcripts you have like how many colleges you've been to and how many certifications. The first page gives you information on just what the application entails and some contact information for people that can help you fill it out. And they're mostly just school counselors and advisors, but I definitely suggest reaching out to them. They can be a great resource to you. The real first page is just contact information. So they'll ask you your name, your birthday, your address, your phone number, your email address. It'll ask you whether you're a student or not, if you're a transfer student, a local student. Um, It'll ask your hometown, which is important for later, and I'll talk about that. And then it'll talk about whether you're a citizen or not, whether you've served in the armed forces, or if you're a reapplicant. So if you tried to get into the program and were rejected in the past and are reapplying now. The last thing on here is the ATITs exam. So pretty much every school will make you take an entrance exam and it's just to make sure that you can test. My nursing program said we have you take the test because whether we teach you really well in the program you have to be able to pass the NCLEX at the end so we want to make sure you can test well under pressure. So that's why they have us take the T's exam and this semester's applicants don't have to take it. I know right? <laughs> they don't. I believe it's because of the coronavirus but yeah they are not required to take it which is really annoying to all the students that had to take it because it was probably one of the most nerve-wracking parts of the application for, I think, most of my classmates. The next thing is academic background. So it'll just ask which colleges you've been to. In my case, I had only been to one. And it just asks where you went, if it was a two-year or four-year degree, if you got the degree or not, and what field you were studying in. And then you'll have to include transcripts from each of those colleges. I believe they're just unofficial, so not a big deal, but you'll have to have those sent into the nursing department. The next thing it asks is healthcare certifications. So whether you are a certified nursing assistant, a licensed practical nurse, an EMT, a medical assistant, or a paramedic, something like that, if you got a certification for it, even CPR certification, they'll ask you when you got it and then ask you to include a copy of your certification. And I had nothing. I didn't have a single certification going into nursing school and I got in just fine so if you're freaking out, it's okay. I'll explain a little bit more later. But yeah, you'll just include your certifications so that'll include more pages at the end with those. And then it'll also ask you healthcare experience. So if you were working with those certifications, I know some people got their CNAs, like took the exam and got the license, but then didn't actually work as a CNA. So it also asks you if you worked and it'll just ask where it was, what position you had, 
how long you were there, total hours completed working, and why you left. And then the next thing is work experience. And so that's just any type of work experience. For me, I only had one job at the time. I was working as a gymnastics instructor. Had nothing to do with nursing, but I included it. Um, and same thing, just where it was, how long you were there, and why you left. And that's the gist of the contact information and basically like your resume. And the next portion is your actual writing. So it asks for a list of extracurricular activities, awards, honors, scholarships, student government, etc. And it asks you to include a typed bulleted format page. And so I'll show you mine. You want to list every extracurricular you've done. It might sound funny, but include it. Every single thing. So extracurriculars, I was on the SU gymnastics team in college for two years, and then I did it all throughout childhood as well, and I was the team captain, so I included that leadership position that I had. Honors, I was accepted into the SU honors program, and I was a high school salutatorian. Any scholarships you have, test scores, and then I just have volunteering that I did. And I did any volunteering even through high school that I did as well. So I volunteered with the Girl Scouts, and I also had a lot of volunteering hours that I did with the gymnastics team at the college. The next section of the application was my most dreaded, and that's the nursing essays. So they ask one essay that, you, that everyone has to answer. And that's the question, a good nurse, dot, dot, dot. And you have to fill in the sentence. And you have a whole page to fill that out. So that was one of the nursing essays. And then the next one, you had five different prompts that you could choose from. And you had to pick two and answer them in two pages or less. And that was like the hardest thing. You would write this like four page paper explaining it all. And then you would have to cut it down to two pages. And it had to be double spaced I believe and it was just really hard to complete. I will be doing a separate video on nursing essays so subscribe to see that one and hit that bell so that you get a notification when it comes out. After you finish your essays you have to get three letters of recommendation. One professional recommendation, one academic, and one personal. So for me I got my boss and my gymnastics coach from college to fill it out because he was my gymnastics coach and they had a club team and I taught little gymnastics classes there so he was technically my boss as well as my coach so I had him fill out a letter of recommendation I had my microbiology teacher fill one out and then I had one of my youth leaders growing up fill out a recommendation for me and so what you'll do is you'll print out these three pages that are at the bottom of the application and you'll fill out the first section with just your name and you have to decide whether you waive or do not waive your right to see this form. So basically that means like say you didn't get into the program and you wanted to know why and the professors were like honestly your recommendations weren't that great. If you waive your right to see them you don't get to see like who gave you a bad recommendation and all that. So it's kind of a controversial topic, like whether or not it matters if you waive your right or not to see it. I had heard like some of the professors think, well, why would you not waive it? Like if you don't waive it, you'll think you're getting a bad recommendation and you want to see it and others just don't care. And so for me, I waived it just to make sure there wasn't like any confusion there like I knew I was gonna get a good recommendation I needed I didn't need to see it so I waived it um, but yeah that kind of stressed me out when I was filling out the application trying to decide whether or not I was gonna waive my right to see the recommendations because if I had gotten a bad one I would have wanted to read it <laughs> but yeah there's some people that think it matters others say it doesn't matter at all so I would just ask people who have already applied to the program that you're trying to go into and then the rest of it, you'll just send it, you'll send the three pages in an envelope to your evaluator or the person you're getting the letter of recommendation from, and you'll want to give them an empty envelope with the nursing department address on it and a stamp. So they can either 
put it in that envelope and send it directly to the nursing department. You'll want to make sure you address it and stamp it, or they can just put it in an empty one, seal it, and give it back to you. But you are cannot open it. Like it needs to be sealed. And so you'll seal it and put it in the manila envelope with the rest of your application papers. So after you fill out your recommendations, you'll go see your advisor at school. I don't know if every university is like this, but our nursing department requires you to go visit with your advisor. And basically all they do is fill in your grades for each of the courses. So they filled in my gen ed grades and then any of the prerequisite grades on here. And that's because of this point system that I'll explain at the end of the video. Then there's one page that's called Functional Requirements for Student Success, and it's basically asking you if you have the physical capabilities of becoming a nurse. You'll just sign an initial at the bottom of the page, and then the last thing you have to do is pay the application fee. I don't know if every university has this, but our fee was $40, so you just go pay the fee and get a receipt for it. And then they include this checklist for you to make sure you finished every single part of the application and you sign and you're done. Yay! <laughs> so there is a couple things I wanted to note. On the top of the page, it says to either type in your answers or print neatly in ink. And I would suggest doing blue or black for sure, but I would say blue if you're handwriting just so that your writing is distinguished from the printed writing on the page. And then they also ask that you don't do anything like pretty with your application. So like they ask you to put all the papers in a manila envelope and just put your name on it and turn it in in the office. And they said that like some people would put like a really decorative cover letter on it with their name all fancy and pretty and they're like, we just throw that away, we don't care. So literally just Put a paper clip on it, put it in a manila envelope, and seal it, and put your name on it, and you're done, and you turn it in. And so there's one more thing I wanted to talk about, and that's the point system that my university has. So again, I don't know if every university does it this way, but my university, when they get the applications in, they'll read through them all and give them points in all of those different sections. So your grades, your T's tests, your letter of recommendations, your essays, all of that, they'll give you certain scores for it with points. And then they'll order the applications in order of the amount of points they have. And essentially they take the top 30. So the 30 with the highest amount of points will get in. And they say it's just a starting point for them with by putting them in point order. And so it's not definitive like, oh, you were one point off, you didn't get in or anything like that. But it just gives them somewhere to start. And then they'll like obviously read it and see if you're a good fit for the program and all that. So again, I don't know how true that is, but that's what's been explained to me. And I don't know if every other university is like that, but I, liked, I wanted to show you this because the amount of points they give to each thing kind of shows the importance of each one. So let's just get started and maybe you'll be able to tell what I'm trying to say. So they'll give you five points for your cumulative GPA. So you can earn up to five points. If you have 4.0 or 3.9, you get five. 3.8 to 3.7 gets four. 3.6 to 3.4 gets three and so on. And then it's the same with your gen ed courses. So it'll see if you've finished all of those gen ed courses and you'll get five points for that. And then the next part is your prerequisite classes. So each course you can get up to 10 points. So an A gets a 10, an A minus gets nine, B plus gets eight, B gets seven, and so on. And there's 10 of those prereq courses. So you can get 100 points just based off your prerequisite grades. And that's the biggest chunk of points you have. So that just shows how important it is to get good grades. And there's another reason coming right up for why you should check out my study videos so that you can get the best grades possible in your prerequisite courses. The next is your ATIT score. And everyone always freaks out about the T's test. They're like, oh, I have to do so well. And there's honestly only 10 points provided. So if you compare that to 
your prerequisite courses and your class grades, it's like nothing. So I just wanted to share that there. So if you're super, super stressed out about your T's test, it's not the most important thing. Just make sure you're consistently working hard in school and in classes. The next thing is letter of recommendations. You can get up to three points for each letter of recommendation. And then your essays, you can get up to 35 points. And that's obviously subjective with how the nurses decided to grade you. And then you get five points for healthcare experience, five points if you are an alternate. So say you had applied for the nursing program the semester before and you were good enough, but you were listed as an alternate. So basically you were on the wait list because you were a good applicant, but they had other ones. And so you were put on the alternate list in case someone that was accepted declined the offer, then you would be put in instead. So if you were an alternate previously, you get an extra five points so that you're more likely to get in the second time around that you apply. And then you can get three points for being a Southern Utah resident and three points for serving in the armed forces. And that's why I'm annoyed with the hometown thing. I don't know why they care if you're a Utah resident. To me, I would think they would want to take out-of-state people because they're paying more tuition, but that's just me. And so I said that T-SES didn't really matter, and I took it, and the first time I got an 88%, or, er, yes, I got an 88%, so I got 8 points out of the 10. And so I was only missing two points from the T-Test, but I retook it um, because I wanted the full 10 points because I knew I had zero healthcare experience. I was getting zero there. I was getting zero because I wasn't an alternate previously. I was getting zero because I wasn't a Utah resident and I was getting zero because I didn't serve in the armed forces. So I wanted those two points to help me kind of even out the rest of those things that I knew I wasn't getting any points. And I also wasn't sure how good my essays were because I hate writing. And so I just wanted those two extra points to kind of cushion me in a little bit. And that sounds ridiculous, but you know, if you're applying to the nursing program, you're frantic about getting in. So I took it twice, even though I probably didn't need to. But I also tried really, really hard in my classes. And I think that was my saving grace because even though I didn't have any healthcare experience and I didn't serve in the armed forces and I wasn't from Utah, I was still able to get in because I think I had a hundred in my courses. <laughs> so check out those study skill videos if you are nervous about your prerequisite courses. I share a lot of good information there. I also want to say that as you're filling in all those boxes for your contact information, do not leave a square blank. Nurses have this thing where while they're charting, they aren't allowed to leave anything blank. And nurses are the ones grading your application. And so you want to make sure you fill in every single box. Even if it doesn't apply, just put N slash A on it rather than leaving it blank because they will get really angry about that. So that's all I have on applying to the nursing program and what the application looks like. I will be doing future videos specifically on the nursing essays portion of the application. So subscribe to my channel to catch those. If this was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions down below. If I missed something or if I didn't cover what you needed answered, please comment. I will be happy to reply to you and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.